Fucking V Live. We got uh, one of the greatest tattooists I've ever got to witness uh, put some masterpieces together. Um, Jamie in the building today. How you feeling today, brother? Pretty good, man. Appreciate you having me here. Everything's good? Yeah, I feel honored. Oh, man. Honored. <laughs> Why well, honored, man? Your works, you, you, you got works um, across the masses, uh, you know, throughout the U.S. You put work on millions of people's bodies probably at this point. Um, you know, you shouldn't feel honored, dude. You, you're a dope tattoo artist with <laughs> with a pretty great style. Mm, thank you. I'm just honored because I enjoy seeing younger people living out their dreams and, and doing what they want to do. And yeah. I encourage that. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. I appreciate that for sure. Um, so let's let's go ahead and get into it, man. You know, a couple things I've always, you know, kind of wanted to learn about, especially some of my favorite tattoo artists is, you know, for starters, you know, what got you into, you know, tattooing? Um, nothing specifically. Turn you up just a little. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, nothing specifically. Uh, I sort of came onto it by accident. Um, I went to college. I didn't like any of the majors or the co- the whole concept of college at the time. Um, I left it. And at the time, I was torn between doing photography mm-hmm. and random just kind of kind of trying to figure it out try, yeah. yeah just trying to hustle a little bit and then i fell into tattooing because i started to get tattooed i got tattooed very young i mm-hmm. think my first tattoo was like 16 17 or just over just over 18 i yeah. forgot but it's the person that gave me the tattoo that made me want to become a tattooer his name is rick Serna. Mm-hmm. he's from the south side he lives i don't he has a house down here but he had the shop first on archer just going a little bit west on kedzie it's called uh, infinite ink yeah yeah that's where i got my it's funny you say that that's uh kin to my girlfriend over there oh for real yeah (laughs) so that's why she turned into a bright into a bright tomato when you said (laughs) that name (laughs) so that's uh that's actually pretty dope Mm -hmm. a small world um do you remember what your first tattoo was yeah it was this bullshit on the outside of my arm right here two skulls i went in there wanting something and then when I came back in a week or two, dude was like, nah, man, you're getting this. I was like, oh, shit, it's like that. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Nice. But luckily the drawing was, was cool, and he was excited to do the tattoo, uh-huh. and that's what excited me more anyways. And I was like, all right, if you're excited, then it's going to look good, so let's do it. Yeah, totally. Nice. So that's good. Well, at least you, you know, went into your your first tattoo with some excitement. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A lot of, some people's first tattoos, they, they you know, wrongfully regret. So, I mean, you know, you're a tattooist, so art is, is inevitably, you know, one of those things you're, you kind of had a knack for. Was not was it one of those things you were kind of just born with a knack for, or was art something you kind of had to work work at, you know? Um, from, from early childhood, mm-hmm. like growing up and drawing, it was never really like a, a thing that was pushed on me. My my parents always did encourage me to do whatever I wanted and pursue. But at, we're talking like five to like ten years old. Yeah, they were pushing more academics. They're like, all right, just mm. worry about school. Go to school. Be a good kid. Be a good kid. Go to school. Go to school. And then around fourth grade, what is that? Maybe like eight years old or something. Yeah, something? yeah, something like that. Yeah, I had uh, one eight. teacher, Ms. Valentino. Uh huh. Italian old school at the time. She's man, bl- bless her soul. She's probably done and done and gone, <laughs> man. done and gone. But uh, Miss Valentino. Yeah, she saw something in me because she pulled me aside. It was me, this other kid named Alex, and this other girl, and uh, she wanted to teach me how to play piano. The other kid, Alex, she just wanted him to hang out mm. and draw, like yeah. after after school. Mm-hmm. And the only reason <clears throat> she was doing these things was to keep everybody like safe and yeah. or or somewhere good doing something versus outside yeah. outside in that time was pretty bad yeah Just, you know a bunch of game makers bullshit yeah shooting each other okay uh-huh. um and then so you just kind of worked at art and uh naturally got better at it after time yeah I, I always did it i always did it as of i don't know like i just enjoyed drawing cartoons i was always the kid in class paying attention but either uh, was ahead of my class already finished all my work okay. or knew what they were talking about to just disregard what the teacher was saying and just do something else creative yeah. 
you know, whether it was uh, either look ahead in the textbook, read ahead, or just draw, just doodle. Was that so, kind of how it turned out when you went to college? Kind of just yeah, like, eh, you know, I was going to the same was, thing yeah. again? And then at that time in college, I, every, it was the birth of YouTube. So mm. more information re- readily mm. available to everyone. So you could just look up anything and either see how to do it, kind of trial and error, trial and error, or, and just scour the Internet for information. Yeah, yeah. That's so. that was totally the same exact feeling I had in college and reasons I left, <laughs> which is which is why I asked you, like, did you go to college feeling the same way? Which is, yeah, I mean, that kind of happens to, to some people. What's fucked up it's, is that is that with that decision, it was it was a very ignorant one. And I kind of I don't regret it because of where I am now. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm happy. I'm good. But I left a lot of shit, you know, a bunch of scholarships, all that shit abandoned it. Well, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Totally, I left a basketball scholarship. <laughs> so <laughs> this my, crazy so motherfucker here. My, my parents were pissed off for a hot minute about mm. that. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you made something out of yourself. You are now, uh, you know, uh, it's at least in Chicago, especially one of the best tattoo artists. Um, that <laughs> that that that's out here. I mean, your work on Instagram. We're obviously going to get that plugged up too as well. Is 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 incredible. I mean. The way you can put together, I mean, some of the most things I've noticed, your portraits, man. I mean, oh, <sighs> dude, your portraits, some of the colors you can put together. I mean, you put together some really, really nice stuff. Um, Thanks, man. But most most of the credit to everything I've ever learned was because of the people I've interacted with. Mm-hmm. A, a lot of that has to do with the crew I have, you know, Ralph being one of the person, uh, one of the persons that I've gotten to tattoo with shoulder to shoulder for over 10 yeah. 12 years yeah ralph's nice and too yeah, yeah. <laughs> and his color theory the way he observes color the way yes. he perceives color i've learned his a lot colors from. are that's, amazing that's the only reason i've you know took took the skills from him and made them my own in a way you know, yeah but jake jake's just fucking laser clean he's a badass computer. he's a computer yeah you know? then we got klaus now klaus is just you know a beast in himself you know just yeah halfway around the world yep. over here and just killing I get it. that different perspective and how they do things over there in uh, China and things mm-hmm. like that, which is dope, yeah. And then uh, Brian, the young cat there, yeah. you know, younger dude coming up. I admire him a lot. He's got that grit. You mm-hmm. know, he's really trying to, he's really he's really coming up and he, he's working. So. Yeah, and then everyone else has been through there. Ali, Ali Sider, that's a Logan uh, square tattoo, BJ. Mm-hmm. Everybody, there's a Johnny, everybody that ended up at uh, Insight Studios now. Yeah. All those dudes kill it. You know? Yeah. So. Wow. So talk to me about your journey then. You know, as a tattoo artist, you know, you got a lot of influences through people. Um, talk me about, a, you know, kind of one of the hardest times you've had um, as a tattoo artist. You know, just any big obstacle you've ran into. Um, <clears throat> just the initial fear of the transition of relying on tattooing as my soul. Mm. Uh, source of income uh, and I think that to two people uh, at the time where I, I was being pulled away from more tattooing and, and these managers at a retail store Burton a snowboard mm-hmm. shop yeah. uh, this dude's name was Clay Harvey and the other lady's name was uh, Candace Dupree um, good people amazing people they basically forced me to quit and kind of pseudo fired me at the same time because mm. they knew that tattooing was I was what, what I was going to be really yeah. good at. And they're like, just go do that, man. Don't be afraid. Just fucking go yeah. do it. And that's it. And they kind of pushed you yeah. over the edge to mm-hmm. really do it. Yeah, interesting. I mean, that is a lot of people's fear to kind of, you know, do something kind of outside of the box that, you know, was outside of the doctor, lawyer, fighter, fighter, you know, policeman yeah. sort of thing. Um, and even then, I, I was stuck between still apprenticing, learning, or the first couple of years mm-hmm. of tattooing with Rick at... Uh, at Infinite, the second location, two storefronts fronts over. Uh, there for there and working at a restaurant and working at that retail store. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so you were really and, just trying and to... And trying to take pictures at <laughs> Yeah, at nightclubs <laughs> and shit like we were talking about. <laughs> yeah, dope. So what did Ames want to be, you know, as a young kid growing up? Before tattooing and art kind of took over, what was the... What I, what I wanted to be when I grew up? Hmm. It sort of still is, but it, I, I still keep that dream to myself to become just a, a living, sustainable photographer, but mm. more so a traveling photographer. I always had a dream that it'd be nice to just be on assignment somewhere around the world. 
to take observe pictures. a creature, observe uh, an ecosystem, write about it, take its pictures, you know, and and then just report it to National Ge- Geographic, Geographic or Life something like that. Something. That'd yeah, be, that'd be the shit. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. Yeah, no, that would be the shit. No That's worries. interesting. You're just hanging out all day. So you, so you pretty much just always had, you know, the creative eye. Uh, In a way, yeah. Yeah. And I just like to dissect things, take things apart, Mm. you know? If I see something that's a like, I love puzzles, so I I collect a lot of puzzles at home, little objects that you take apart, and you remember them, try to Mm. do them faster, faster, faster every time. Okay. Damn. So you're like like a working project all the time. (laughs) Holy shit. Um, So one of the things that, you know, I've observed outside of tattooing, um, this is something I've really personally wanted to kind of get to know about you. You must is that uh you know you are a very very uh positive guy and i kind of wanted to dip into your brain a little bit on what sustains this positivity and what's the motivation behind Mm -hmm. um you know your positive attitude Um, all the time just because there's (laughs) i don't know man it's a it's a a big question with a with a big answer (coughs) without getting too personal it's just just the shit I've gotten to see and the experiences I've gotten to experience is, and the decisions I've had to make and the moments of deciding you know even life or death situations of nah man like that's not that's not my life like I don't know yeah just grow uh, I, a lot of it has to do with how I grew up you know you've Aside from the shitty neighborhood we 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 grew up in, all all the gang violence, all that shit, I, I still grew up in a very loving home. Yeah. So that my parents just always motivated me to do whatever I want. And it kind of convinced me not to be afraid of the bullshit going on outside. Right. So, yeah. Hmm. Man, I mean, it's it's just something I've always had to take into account of. It's just you know you've always very polite, you know, sir, ma'ams, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, it, it just it's just something I've had to take note of because like we live in a crazy city, bro. Like, right. That's it's what it's one of those things you don't see too often. That's that's exactly my point. That's why, you know, because why not? Why not just be polite? Why not just be kind? You know, but like everyone, you know, I, that's how I act towards the general public. But I'd assume if anyone were to get to know me, eventually you start seeing the negative traits in people. But that's just natural. You know? Yeah. That's just, that just happens when you get close to someone. Mm. But outside of that, as a community and as a society, it's it just makes sense to just be nice all the time. Yeah. Dude, man, it sounds just like you live like a badass life. Like, you're a photographer, tattooist, and, you know, people who don't know, you drive a pretty badass Harley, too. <laughs> yeah. I love that thing. Have you always been into bikes? Yeah. I, this is pretty... This is like my first official bigger bike, mm-hmm. smaller bikes, bicycles. <laughs> I used to be a little shorty kid riding around a bicycle on a dyno from yeah. like south side all the way to north side, all over Chicago. Just really just riding around, uh-huh. just trying to get into trouble, trying to be up friends, you name it. Damn, so the, <laughs> you're really about this bike life. Uh-huh. Then mopeds, mm. I had a moped for a minute, two of them got stolen, whatever. Nice, mm-hmm. damn. That's fucking. That's yeah. fucking crazy. How'd your fucking mopeds get stolen? Cause you, they're light. You can just pick them bitches up and just look pop them <laughs> up. And just, come on, man. It's Chicago. Yeah. Fuck yeah. When there's a will, there's a way. I've seen. There's a, no <laughs> fuck yeah, dude. I've seen. I've seen motherfuckers. <laughs> two big ass dudes lift up all Harley and just throw it in the back of a van in less than five minutes. So, yeah, you can jack anything here. Yeah, you can fucking jack anything, especially a fucking moped. Uh-huh. Realistically. Um, nice. So, how long have you been tattooing? I think now maybe 11, 12 years. Professionally, I'd say maybe six, seven. Really? Yeah. Only six, seven years professionally? I, I'd say so. Like, to the point where I either felt comfortable doing anything or just working with the body from mm. head to toe. Yeah. And and being confident that the product that was delivering it was coming back healed perfectly, like, with no mm-hmm. either trauma or or any other imperfections. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, there's a m- bunch of different, you know, tattoo styles. What would you say is, you know, your best style of tattooing? Mm. 
I like them all. They're all fun. Because for me, it's never it's with tattooing. Mm-hmm. It's it's never about really the art. I, there's a lot of artists that are that just exclusively would just create their own art and put it on people's bodies as their art. Right. I enjoy more so the meticulous aspect of doing the tattoo. Okay. The process of the tattoo. Right. So the content usually never really matters to me unless it's something I don't feel comfortable doing yeah. or feel someone else is going to excel in more, mm. than, more than me. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm. So what would you have to say is, you know, probably the, well, you might not have one, but if you could say some of your most favorite tattoos you've ever had to do. Portraits. Even though I don't get to do a lot of them. Really? Surprisingly, yeah. Really? For a, for a minute, when I first started tattooing, the first five, six years, I was doing a lot of them, and people really liked them. And I always deconstructed them and saw a lot of errors in them. <laughs> Your portraits are, are very, very clean, brother. Bro, you, you have not seen the <laughs> shit that's out there, though. If yeah. You, if you think they're clean... They're decent at that. From yeah. The, from the shit that I see through Instagram. I'm yeah, I've seen some people that are like overseas that are yeah, doing some, some crazy some shit. Some local here. There's a lot of really. Sl- I call them sleeper tattooers here mm. in Chicago. There's a bunch of tattooers that a lot of people won't really know unless they're either referred to by word of mouth or a friend that are just content with just not being on social media, not being in that world, and just. Doing their everyday thing. Yeah, doing their everyday thing, living their peace. Nice. Mm-hmm. And so, um, with your photography, you 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 carry a camera around with you everywhere. Yeah, I yeah. try to. And I know a lot of people have a lot of questions. What type of camera do you actually use? Uh, this w- this one has been my daily for the past maybe year or two now. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a Japanese made brand, Fujifilm. I pretty much call it the poor man's Leica because <laughs> I can't afford one yet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so essentially it's the same thing, but just very smaller, compact, mm-hmm. smaller sensor so without getting too technical on it. Yeah. But it's decent. I love it. Yeah. I like it because I could take it apart, put it in my pocket, and it's good to go anywhere I take it. The only thing I don't like about it is that it's not weather resistant. So if I'm in the rain, I got to put it away. got to put it away, away. Yeah. 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 That's the only thing that sucks. But you get some pretty great shots. If people don't know, you guys got to tap into his Instagram. <laughs> He's he posts very great shots daily, and um, it's it's just so crazy, man. I mean, even you know through your daily life, you seem like very peaceful. Your at home life seems very peaceful, man. You you're like a, a garden gardener <laughs> at home. You got a lot of plants, dude. Yeah, uh, that's more of a newer within the past two three year kind of admiration hobby more so uh kind of realizing that the older i get sometimes i get too involved into technology and too reliant on it so now i've kind of dedicated my life to kind of find a balance between what is real and organic Mm -hmm. to us and what we are using for convenience Mm. keeps me keeps me grounded it keeps you to yeah. To, it keeps me grounded to where I came from, where I'm going. It lets it lets me be less mean to people. If that makes <laughs> sense. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah. Make no, that makes sense. I mean, fucking social media can uh, it makes you think differently. Um, kind of makes you live in a fucking alternative world. You know, it's kind of kind of almost false reality to an extent. It's just kind of like it, it'll jumble you up. So that is a a very good practice, I'd say. Mm-hmm. You know, but with that, it just depends on how you use it. Some people use it as their day to day, like Bible, like mm. they abide by it. And yeah. Some people use it strictly for business. Some people use it conversely for what it can be used for: deception, to lie, just just make up a story and just do whatever, <laughs> do whatever you want. Yeah, babe, can you make sure st- is this still going? All right. Um, so talk to me. Uh, I got a qu- I got a one question. Because this this is something that, you know, me as a connoisseur of, you know, tattoos, um, you know, I have no indecent skill at art at all. But I love getting tattoos. I uh, spend countless hours. How do you feel about um, how the world may feel about people in the professional world with tattoos? Um, it'll disappear. It's disappearing already, you know. You think it'll, it'll disappear totally? Yeah, yeah. Eventually, mm. yeah, it's inevitable. Just like, you know, 
not to touch on this subject specifically with race eventually we are all going to be seen as as one mm-hmm. you know but we got to go through the rough bullshit till we all start getting the fucking picture together. yeah i hate yeah. so i hate the negative perception tattoos give right i really hate that but that's disappearing because it's being commercialized that's being so nowadays i think i've seen it advertised to children mm. and the common kind of suburbanite there's like temporary tattoos in like Starbucks culture, mm. you know, so it's everywhere. Yeah. yeah, I mean, tattoo culture is everywhere. It's mm-hmm. been here before us, before it was called tattoo culture, you know, so it's, it's everywhere. But it's just one of those things that's kind of got to die away like like weed. I, I, like, right. I hate everybody's negative perception of weed. Well, now, you know, it's debated that it's medicine to us, so. It's fucking medicine. Yeah. It is me- <laughs> It is medicine to us, for sure. That is definitely for sure. Um, is there any tattoo that you, you know, just absolutely hated doing or just mm. regretted doing? Not not necessarily the, the actual tattoo, but more so the, the, the person. Mm. It's always the person. <laughs> so what was your worst uh, tattooing experience like? Just people that speak out of ig- sheer ignorance, you know, like people with very cruel intentions and I don't know that I'm tattooing them, but they're just telling me the bad shit that they want to do. I'm like, bro, that is not yeah. like, that you should not do any of that. Yeah. You know, fuck. <laughs> then, then I'm stuck there tattooing. And I'm like, what the fuck? Absorbing that energy from that person. Yeah. 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 You know? So it just kind of fucks your day. Yeah, up. man. <laughs> I don't need that shit. <laughs> you can't give this positive guy no <laughs> negative bullshit. All right, don't come in this fucking chair with, with negative energy, guys. Please. Even though I'm guilty sometimes of going in there with negative energy, but mm. I, I try to keep it as peaceful as I can. That's what's hard for me. It's like I have my my exterior body always admits that I'm either in a serious mood or angry. When conversely, on the inside, I'm just I'm just good. I'm yeah. Hello. Yeah, no, you're very, very mellow. <laughs> People can be very confused that you right. like. I, I mean, I've I've noticed. You know, you can be in a room, and just be solely to yourself, locked in. Right. And it's not even because you're being an asshole. It's just right. it's just and you're that's being I've, I've, Yeah, I've learned. I've learned to kind of, uh, I guess, speak out loud more, like as a security thing. Like, hey guys, I'm doing all right. Right. Have you have you always been <laughs> like a check in like yeah, a, like a check in with still up and running? Like, Sometimes have Ralph would, Ralph would be looking at me like all like side eye. I'm like, man, is this fool mad? This fool mad? Yeah, like, I'm not mad, bro. Like, like everything's like, chill. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> Everybody's good. good. Have you always I been that shy? Day. Me? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Shy only because uh, of a fucking thing that I can't help not do, which is observe every single little detail. Mm. So in large environments, groups, large groups, Mm -hmm. I get clammed up and closed up, not because I get anxiety in a way. Sometimes Mm -hmm. it is a little bit of anxiety, but it's more so because I'm nitpicking everything. I'm looking at people's faces, Mm -hmm. dissecting the room. (laughs) Yeah. Damn, dude. You're like a, I don't even know, like a fucking human scanner. (laughs) Like it's crazy. I mean, an observer, I guess. Yeah, yeah, you're you're a natural observer. I guess that's just a natural talent that you have in your own right, is to be able to observe and nitpick certain shit. I'm like that to an extent, but I'm not like artistic with my shit. Mm-hmm. I'm just real picky on organization and shit like that. <laughs> like, I need shit to be in line, you know. So that's a that's a really crazy trait to have. Does that bother you? No, Sometimes no, because the drive is knowledge, the, mm. the pursuit of knowledge, like knowing more, like just finding out more, like just coming across random information. I'm not going to perceive it as tr- immediate truth. I'm going to dissect that and mm. research it until I perceive it as truth. That's mm. with anything, spirituality, philosophy, whatever. I'm like, all right, you can preach to me whatever the fuck you want to preach to me, but give me some time and let me take that shit apart. So I can spit right. some shit back at you. <laughs> right. Damn. That's fucking crazy. Um, so have you ever done any tattoos like in places you weren't comfortable doing? Mm-hmm. Uh like areas of the body? Yeah. yeah. Everywhere. Everywhere. You name it, male, female, explored it. Kind of. 
Yeah. Never tattooed someone's fucking dong though. Right. Right. Yeah. I hope yeah. not. Never Jesus tattooed Christ. a lady part, uh, private lady parts either. Nothing like that. Mm. But boobs. Boobs are normal, but all that shit. Nothing that ever made me feel uncomfortable. I feel like I've always done a very good job at knowing that there is a certain level of discipline in a professional environment, and it doesn't matter what type of environment that is, whether it be as as grimy as as a piece of shit food truck that puts out dope ass tacos, mm-hmm. but that lady's telling you thank you, thank you, and you're welcome. Right. Same same rule applies to anything. Mm-hmm. So tattooing, keep it professional, keep it clean, you know, keep that shit outside the shop. Yeah. So are you excited for January 1st uh, legalization of cannabis? <laughs> yeah. I don't know how that's going to work. I haven't really investigated the details. Yet. I don't know how the shit's going to work either. Okay. I just know if it's anything like how these other states got it. Mm. Should be pretty good time. Get recreational. Just whatever. I think it'll mellow the city down a little. Uh, oh, for sure. Because... If if motherfuckers aren't mad that they're not high enough, they're mad that the shit they're finding is garbage. Right. <laughs> yeah. And it's gonna turn. It's gonna tone a lot down. Yeah. Shit's gonna be a good time. Hopefully, so medicinally, it's already proven to help a lot of people. Yeah. Recreationally, I think, as a community, it should be fine. Mm-hmm. We should see a lot of numbers going down. Mm-hmm. But with um, that, it, it's hopefully th- the same rules will apply to. As of alcohol, like keep it discreet, private. Don't yeah. be on blast. Yeah, don't be out outside. You know, <laughs> In front well of that I, you know the laws. I I did get a chance to see some of the laws, and it is very strict. With that, like, you still can't right. smoke in your car and like be let, driving. Let me catch some fool smoking a joint at a yeah. children's park. I'm like, nah, man. Nah, Look, you gotta yeah ease up. On. You know what I'm saying? It's like, the same shit. Yeah. You know how I ride a bike? I hate seeing excessive revers. Mm-hmm. Keep, like. That keep you're the, yeah. Just, you're just tainting my reputation, bro. Yeah. As a fellow biker, what the fuck are you doing, man? Yeah, <laughs> making all the ignorant. fucking noise. <laughs> 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 right. Yeah. No. Totally. I think it should be a really good time, man. Everything. Everything is gonna be all fucking right once mm-hmm. that shit goes down. I believe. Yeah, it's gonna be a good time. Going to people's work like yeah, that shit's fucking all digital. Edited man. bullshit. Edited bullshit, bro. Mm-hmm. Damn. But. There's been a lot of shit that I've seen in person from people that I had some doubt about. And, man, clean as fuck. So does that kind of help you, like, as a tattoo artist, is, like, having the photographer's eye? A lot of times, like, even when you go to, like, either lay a stencil or even when you're going to go, you know, to start tattooing, does that photographer's eye, like, kind of help you with placement, shit like that? It does, but then it's also a combination of everything I've learned, so... Uh, pa- painting, just composition in general, comic books, you name it. You know, it's just lessons, little, little, little grains of lessons from every single medium, every single avenue of art that ha- I have used to apply into the tattoo. Mm. So, yeah, it's a combination of a lot of shit. So I'm really interested into your photography. You know, aside from your tattooing, um, because your photography is is something really good do you have something because i see you take a lot of pictures of kind of a lot of things do you have something specific that you like to take pictures of um yeah usually if it's more like private photography private in the sense where i'm on vacation and fucking i'm just chilling i got all the time in the world then i'll i'll pull out like my bigger cameras like Mm -hmm. big film cameras like medium format film uh I've shot with like a bigger four by five film camera, but I usually would rent those. Mm-hmm. So it's, a, it's a big sheet. It's a big yeah. ass sheet of paper. So the quality, once you scan it, is fucking ridiculous. Mm. Um, so if I'm doing my thing, it's landscapes, landscapes or f- far shots, just scen- scenery. Um, and then at the same time, macro photography, like mm. really close shit, like bugs, plants. I saw that things. shit. You were taking a photo of. Uh a plant and a, and, a, and a bug very very fucking close yeah i'm trying to get even closer but uh that would require me to invest in a micron or microscope yeah, yeah. motherfucker started like at 400 bucks so Damn. for a decent one <clears throat> like mm-hmm. a g or two for a good one mm. <clears throat> but i don't know if i want to 
go all, all in like that. Yeah, know? I mean, yeah, if, but fuck, dude, they they I'm still come out. Yeah, but fun. they still come out pretty fucking mm-hmm. clean. Yeah. And, and you never know. I mean, like you said, you might well, be doing that. And that's, me, that's me still kind of <coughs> half-assing it. I haven't really staged a good photo because I'm still figuring it out. Yeah. Because uh, at, at that close of a of a distance, picture like a a, a piece of onion skin. That's mm-hmm. the, the yeah, thi- the, the thinness. Thi- the thickness of mm-hmm. the onion skin is how much is in focus. Mm. So to get a full bug's head in focus... It would be slices, almost pictures like a, a deli slicer. Yeah. Going from front to back, all the way back. Mm. Usually, maybe like ten pictures, twenty pictures, to get you the, the to get you the depth. Damn. Yeah. So it takes a hot minute. It takes them, yeah. But to get it, all those photos. What's fucked up too is that it requires a lot of precision. So you need like rails. Yeah, you, you can't move. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Girl, I just got some shit from Amazon. I'm about to return it because man, it's it's been a pain in the ass. Really, damn. So, like, you know, with the photography, obviously you said you wanted to do that for so long. How did you kind of get started into taking, you know, photos? Like, what was, like, your first camera and shit like? Mm, That was just from seeing my my grandpa. Mm. My grandma took pictures of the family when I was growing up as a kid. Really? Every time we had, like, a gathering or something, it'd be my grandpa just popping off pictures. And I would always want to play with his camera. And he would let me. Mm. That shit was dope. It's like an old little Canon film camera. It had oh. a big ass flash on it. He would just take all the, whole the, all the typical fucking stage family shots where it's like the whole, home, Everybody's the lo- whole home. homie family like yeah. at the table. And, and and then frame them. And they're all over my grandma's house. Yeah. Oh, or, nice. Or all over the family. So house. you kind of just grew up <laughs> essentially around pictures and shit. Yeah. <coughs> I didn't really... I liked it, but I, I didn't know mm. that I would end up loving it as much as I do now. But it's it's in my family through him. So there's a bunch of photo albums of our family, of like my parents when they were younger, <clears throat> their siblings, their kids. They're dope. They're like really well-lit stage photos. And I always wanted to continue that. So that's why I always wanted to pursue the idea of photography, mm. preserving m- beautiful moments of my family one mm. day. So it was either my kids can see it or whoever follows me after that can see it and see it in a nice see way. it forever yeah, yeah. <laughs> realistically you know mm-hmm. you could probably see these things you know for the rest of their lives one of these images could may you know be not if it's on a computer that shit's all lost hey it, it'll be gone <laughs> man this is why it's very important to to print out your photographs yeah People don't print out photographs anymore. Yeah, you get, we got to start doing some more of that shit. Like, creating those hard memories, the copies of memories. Because, like you said, this shit could all be erased one yeah. fucking day. It's happened to me, man. A bunch of homework from college, a bunch of pictures that I took in, like, 2005 four, or 2005 to 2008. Gone. <sighs> but I still kept the hard drive. Mm. Because, I, you know, the better technology gets... You never fucking know. I'll be able to get it one day. One day. Yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure there. there's a way you can grab that shit mm-hmm. now. We're just not looking <laughs> deep enough. But no. I'm pretty sure. A lot of the data recovery programs are still whatever. Mm. But it's an old disk. So it's more of a mechanical issue. Yeah. Versus a computing the issue. The compute issue. Yeah. Right. Well, hopefully one day we can get those fucking photos back. That would suck. Yeah, we got to start printing our fucking photos out. <laughs> and get, putting them in photo albums, creating fucking memories. Everybody's on the gram. Get out here and, and have something to show your kids. <laughs> moves. When you're, uh, you know, at the family reunion and but stuff yeah, like that. Not, man, I segue a lot. I'm sorry. So, like, I go from one question to another and mm-hmm. I jump around and I apologize. But to yeah. touch back on uh, what you were saying about photography of what I like. Yeah. Landscape and macro, but then on the day to day street. Like just street photography, shooting people in the street. Yeah, just reminds of reminds me of where I came from, my city. Mm. Seeing people, people do funny shit. People do crazy <laughs> shit. W- weird people. Yeah, and you just like snapping. Uh, it's like a little movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, damn, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Just kind of pick your brain a little bit on your photography, you know. And is there, is there one specific photography, um, you know, or piece of photography you'd want to do as a profession, or is it kind of just like everything involved with it yeah i think it'll be more yeah everything so it'd be like journalistic so it'd be a combination of landscapes macro shots you know life creatures and you know people i meet in towns villages whatever 
Yeah, and I mean, you take your you take your camera everywhere. You get some awesome video footage yeah. on your uh, that's on my phone on your bike. Yeah, that's a, that's on my phone. Oh, you record that on your phone? Yeah, really? That's, that's on my phone on this shit. Yeah, no with way. With a little lens on it. And then you just re- yeah. when you're riding on your bike, you just use your phone. Yeah. So sometimes uh, I used to fucking hold it like a dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> I got this vest. So uh-huh. I, I slip it in the vest in the chest pocket, and then the wide lens gets everything. Oh pretty fuck! Cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, they look pretty it's dope. Fun. It's fun. You do it from on your board when you're riding with your dog and everything. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. What kind of dog is that? Like a Jack Russell Schnauzer. I don't oh, know, you shouldn't have said that. Something. <laughs> That's a <her> shit. <laughs> Those Jack Russells. Something. He's yeah. All scraggly looking. Yeah, but he's fucking cool. It looks like he got a ton of personality. He's yeah, he's chill. <coughs> he's yeah. chill, but he's he's a little bastard though. I ain't gonna lie about that. Right, like, what the fuck yeah. do you do? New people, it's like, I, and I know it's an association that I've inflicted in him. Because mm. now that every time I put him in that situation, I know it's my anxiety. And I know it's a reaction based on my anxiety. Mm. That's, how, that's how creatures work. <laughs> and and he gets all giddy. He gets all like, man, who the fuck is this? Right. Who the fuck is this? Yeah. So he gets a little nippy, a little barky. Mm. But well, I mean, he's being protective. Yeah. You're the homie. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> you know, you he's being protective. Yeah, but I'm trying to work on that. I'm trying to work on uh, taking him, um, saving up some cash to take him to this place called uh, Anything is Possible. <laughs> what the fuck is that? It's like a uh, dog training. Oh, place. somewhere that they can, they can fix him up and shit? No, Get him obedient? Just, uh, mm. yeah, just work with me and him. Mm. Mm-hmm. Anything is possible. It's That's funny. fucking clever. I think it's like Augusta and Ashland or some shit, like Ukrainian village up there. Mm. And they fucking train dogs and get them right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's fucking interesting. Mm-hmm. They like, have a bunch of places like that. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love dogs. I have two Dobermans at home. Mm. Yeah. Big ones? Big ones. Huge. Like 80 pounds? I have a red one and a fawn one. 80. The fawn one's about 90, and the red one's about 80 because she's kind of fat. That's what's up. I hate my Mother and dogs. son. Those are beautiful dogs. Yeah. They're fucking loyal as shit, too. Hell People yeah. who say they turn, they're, <laughs> they're sick. They're the most loyal dogs ever. Mm-hmm. They'll protect you till the end. Mine's cool. Mine's nice, but unpredictable mm. sometimes. Mm. That's it. Just unpredictable? Sometimes. Yeah. It, it looks like he scenario. likes to have fun with you. You guys go riding and shit daily and things like yeah. that? Yeah. He lives a good life. I, I, at least I think so. Uh, I try to exercise and maximize my time with him as much as I can. Yeah. Cause I ain't got it. Nothing else to do right now. <laughs> Work, him, plants, eat. That's it. <laughs> Dude, you live like a crazy minimalist lifestyle, almost. Basic, like the essentials. Stress, yeah. Stress free. free. Yeah. Why? That's the kind of the mode I'm in right now is trying to find that, you know, stress free zone, mm. in between a very tight space right now, and just trying to hit that target and get there. Mm. Uh, that's the, been my biggest battle right now what would you say you know for people who who are looking for that stress-free zone like how did you get there Mm. you know aside from the upbringing and you know shit going on you know what was the change in your life that just kind of pushed you to living the way you live i don't know i i i i I don't like being intrusive so Mm. i don't like forcefully involving myself into situations you know other than my business my work you know that's the only time i feel like it's okay to kind of like you know, forcefully talk to someone about what i do other than that i enjoy keeping it to myself just to mind your business ass motherfucker it's, yeah it's i don't know i i enjoy the movie more so than <laughs> just fucking in, being the guy that's talking during the movie yeah you're a true like, observer yeah i'm still in control of what i'm doing i'm still kind of Deciding what I want to do. Life is about choices. So, mm. if someone says, "Let's go here," I'm be like, mm, "Does does it benefit me? Yes, no, maybe. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Yes, no, maybe." So you just recently also had a birthday, right? Friday. Yeah, last Friday was your birthday. Fifteen years old, bro. <laughs> yeah, dude, you fucking age with the grace of God right now, bro. When you told me your age, I was like, "Holy shit, no way." You know what I'm saying? How does it feel, man, to be here for another year, you know, and, and in your position? Are you satisfied or not not, not necessarily satisfied? I know we're never satisfied, but are you happy with the way you've turned out, you know, just having a recent birthday? Yeah, I got no complaints, man. 
I got ups and downs. I got stories for days, but never complaints. Well, I do. Well, yeah, I retract that statement. I'm a complainer. <laughs> I like to keep to myself so other people don't have to hear me complain. Mm. Yeah. It's better that way. Man. I think you're going to have a very fruitful life that way, brother. I don't know. Maybe. I have to just keep surrounding myself with plants and animals then. <laughs> so you don't got to deal with motherfucking humans. <laughs> That sounds like a fucking plan. Not negatively, it's just it's <laughs> No, just it's just naturally for you, I guess. <laughs> Not in a negative way, it's just it's just more so I deal with people every day. Hmm. So, you know? And I invest a lot of my energy into the, the clients I tattoo every day. You know, to the point where I want them to feel so comfortable that they're my friend mm. and want to come back and see me and just hang out because that's what it should be, you know? Yeah. You're just hanging out, getting a fucking awesome tattoo. Why should it be a chore? It should be fun. Every time. Yeah, tattooing should always be fun. That's the one thing that, you know, I hate is when I, if I've ever gone to get a tattoo and it wasn't a fun experience. Because now you just kind of feel like you went through some, not necessarily, even if it comes out good, you just, you didn't enjoy the process of it. And it comes just, you know, less enjoyable. It really does. So Mm -hmm. I'm glad you kind of look for that (laughs) as a tattoo artist. I I try to set that as a standard, Mm -hmm. uh, as a moral standard, at least at, at code with the guys mm-hmm. but we all share that standard so it works out oh that's nice mm-hmm. yeah are there any um places that you immediately like want to travel to to go take pictures of i know you were talking to me earlier um, saying you want to really travel and take pictures are there any places you really want to get to to really take pictures of the landscape or whatever maybe uh places like northern you alaska alaska Mm-hmm. Alaska. Yeah. Why Alaska? It's fucking cold in Alaska. Mountains. The still, oh, yeah. the stillness, the silence. <laughs> the silence, bro. The you're silence. Un- you're yeah. underestimating the silence. When's the last time you've been out in the middle of Never. Des- in the middle of the desert for like twenty minutes, and hear nothing but wind or just whatever's happening? Yeah. <laughs> I think we uh, we actually take that for granted in the city. Hell yeah, man. We're surrounded by white noise. You try to be quiet. You try to tune that shit out. You either have to be practicing meditation pretty thoroughly to, to tune that out. Even in a quiet room, there's noise going on, on in the outside. Mm-hmm. Fuck. Yeah, man. That would be an immediate for me to like, get somewhere quiet. That sounds That sounds pretty fucking dope. Yeah. Damn. Places like Germany. I've always had an, an admiration to Germany. Just Why Germany? People run from Germany. Uh, yeah. I'd, more so the the engineering that comes out of Germany. Yeah. The innovation. Yeah, they've come up with some Mechanics. great shit. They're great machinists. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I Even with know. weapons and shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, more, more so motors. And computer no, computer yeah, but they are. No, they had some great people. Some, uh, some of them. Germans worked for NASA. Mm-hmm. You know. People, they, they, they come out with some great stuff. Them and the Swiss have probably created some of the most perfect cameras. Really? Uh, yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Have you ever been to any of those places yet or no? No. No? Not yet. No, not yet. Not in a rush. A lot of people always push that shit on me. Like, you gotta go, you gotta go. I'm like, man, chill, man. You it's go gonna travel. be a time, right? Yeah. It's gonna be your time. I don't care if I'm like 60 and experiencing that shit. I got all the time in the world. Yeah. Damn, you're very patient, motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah, are you? Yeah. Really? I learned that shit from a sophomore uh, uh, history teacher, Trevor Schofer, Mr. Mm -hmm. Schofer. He had it around the clock, and it said, uh, patience is a virtue, and he would preach that shit all the time for patience. Hmm. For anxiety. Seems that you just kind of pick up things along the way and just kind of, you know, Snatch and grab the good things and lessons you've learned and just kind of yeah. use everything good to mold yourself. Yeah, and seeing the bad shit to be like, all right, I'm not surrounding myself by that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> stay clear of that yeah, shit. Hell yeah. You know, damn, man, that's dope. That's dope. It's just so crazy to, try to you know, actually get behind the mind of, you know, uh, you know, more tattoos because we really don't get to talk to you guys much. It's kind of just, hey, this is what I want. Okay, it, cool. This is what I think. Great. When we're gonna do it? Great. Hey, how you doing? Great. Right. You know. Yeah. Thanks for the tattoo. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. You know, we see them all. We see the traveler that 
passerby. We see the, the constant, you know, returning customer mm-hmm. or people that you end up tattooing <coughs> so much that you become like your homie. Yeah. You're just hanging out with them. Yeah. You know, it's just however, however you take it. That's crazy. And I assumed you made a lot of net networking connections and things like that. from All the time. I've tattooed all types of people. You name it. From people you one would consider to come from nothing, the gutter, to mm-hmm. people of elite status and high luxury, you know. And uh, all types of intellect. Doctors to people that just make shit with their hands. You know, all types of class. And they're all the same. They're all just nice. They all want to be treated good. They're all nice. Mm. Man. Except for the few that I said earlier. <laughs> yeah, the, those the, the few ignorant that ruin your day. It's not, it's not about ruining the day. It's that it's that they're just spreading that shit around. Yeah. You know, spreading that shit. Because they're, they're... What's the next stop? They go to the store. They're going to be complaining to somebody. Mm-hmm. Something. I don't know. <laughs> so, let's talk about your Harley. <laughs> when did you uh, first learn to ride? Uh, I learned to ride when I was a kid. Uh, me and my family took a trip to Mexico to visit family and we were in the middle of nowhere in the in the center of it uh, Zacatecas I think it's called mm. the state and somewhere they had a farm in the middle of nothing dry ass desert my dad owned a like a dirt bike I think it was like a Honda 150 something mm. 250 maybe something but I, I learned on that shit I had no clutch so you had to fucking run run and start it and just hop on like a fucking horse and just go I busted my shit <laughs> five times the before two, you hopped on the that two shit. Two weeks, uh, the two weeks that we were there, bad. Mm. But it was so fun. I was a little ass kid. I was yeah, like twelve maybe, thirteen, something like that. But big enough to fucking ride. Yeah, mm-hmm. that, that shit was fun. I fell in love with it, and ever since that day, I knew that one day I would buy a Harley. That one day I would own motorcycles. Mm. Yeah. Just fun. It's fun as hell. Damn. <laughs> I, I like the. The, the discipline of it, the discipline potential of it, and the the adventurous. Crazy what do you mean by the discipline? Where you potential. Could, uh, where I could I could ride my bike and feel like everything is in in sync in unison. I'm mm. in I'm in at, even at 85 miles an hour. I can let go of the handlebars and feel the motor, feel the wind all in a certain frequency of at a certain rate mm-hmm. that. It's almost like a standstill of mm. time where mm. I, it feels like I have all the time in the world. Right. If I wanted to, I could pull out my phone, send a text consciously and and still haul ass at 85 miles an hour and have enough time to put it in my pocket and continue about, about my day. That discipline. Just, I don't know. Just <laughs> sense, it's, a, it's not a sense of control, but it's a, I don't know, it's an awareness of some kind. Does it give you that little thrill? Yeah. Uh, the, the thrill comes from doing stupid shit, <laughs> you know, trying to fucking burn out, fucking pop wheelies, all that crazy shit. I got some homies from fucking California that do ridiculous shit on these things every day. <laughs> yeah. If I was younger, I'd, 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 I might want to learn how to do it, but that's just out of my element. Yeah. That's, uh, that's you know. It's a little too far yeah, on. Yeah, too far gone. I yeah. Missed the, I missed the boat on missed that Missed the shit. boat. Hell yeah. It'd probably still be nice to at least learn how to do it. I'd, I'd so you could, you know, fuck bike, around. So I'd still fuck with a dirt bike. Mm. I'd, I'd still take that shit around. I got a homie big-ass dude. I used to tattoo him here all the time. Brian, he works in San Diego at mm. the Harley Davidson there. Um, He just got an upgrade, a big old like, scrambler, I think, or a dirt bike, too. He's been fucking just riding around all the mountains, all the rocks with his homies, and that shit looks too fun. Yeah, that, that would be dope. Yeah. Right and get to get to go out to mm-hmm. some mountains, some some landscapes like Utah or some mm-hmm. shit, and just get out there and fucking right. ride. Mm-hmm. That would be dope. But then also, <coughs> just riding on a straight path in the middle of nowhere, Arizona is just as appealing. That's yeah. what I mean. That's the discipline. You're just there. You're content. You're cool. You're hanging out, just either with headphones on, music, or just the wind. The wind. Mm-hmm. Or earplugs, and just ambient noise. Mm. Mm-hmm. Peaceful. Yeah. I just think you're just always trying to find your your peace zone mm-hmm. and everything. You know what I mean? It, it's the fuel to my inspiration. So then when I when it comes down to coming up with a drawing or coming up with an idea or putting an idea in motion, that's you know I take that energy from that, from just being at ease. Mm-hmm. My mind's going all day, bro. Like <laughs> yeah. I can only smoke so much weed to keep me relaxed. Right. 
otherwise i sometimes i feel like yeah yeah it's too much and then you can just be drowsy and shit keeps me up at night sometimes and if i don't write it down if i don't put it in motion if i don't draw it if i don't take a picture of it i get all fucking anxious fidgety and shit yeah no work i feel that i gotta work on that you gotta keep going yeah you get that yeah i i feel that 100 percent. that's fucking crazy man Mm -hmm fucking psycho <laughs> no but that's a that's honestly a good thing you need to have because you know a lot of people do get so complacent and they follow that and then you know but i think that's okay depending on the context of the situation at some point in time mm. yeah you know, some point in time it is okay to be it's okay complacent. to just relax on something and take a break yeah know? and that's a that's a uh um a problem of modern society is because information is so quick and satisfaction is so quick mm-hmm. that people don't realize that it's okay to just chill. Like Stop and smell the fucking yeah, roses. Yeah, hang out for a minute. But look look at how we live. Like rent's going up. We're not getting paid enough. You gotta, you know, if you're doing your own thing, you gotta hustle extra hard. We live in one of the most expensive cities in the world and it's only gonna get pricier and pricier and pricier. So if you want to stay here, you can't really complain. You just got to keep doing it. Yeah. You, yeah, you really can't can't, can't complain. You kind of got to just keep mm-hmm. going with the motion. Because it's your choice to be here. Yeah. If you don't like it, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> right, yeah. And who the f- right, mm-hmm. and if you like living in the city. Right. But sometimes it comes with, 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 it, with the negative sides of it. Some people that unfortunately can't produce or can't do their own thing or earn a a capped level of income they get pushed out Mm -hmm. and that's what's sad about it yeah you know but but you can argue that it's just social evolution or whatever but it's just sad to see sometimes the gentrification but it happens it's natural it happens everywhere though you know put put yourself in fucking 1890 chicago to now yeah it's it's nothing it's not new no no, still booming, yeah. still going, mm-hmm. <laughs> same shit. Mm-hmm. It's um, just like I tell homies when they when people that that I tattoo come ask me about Chicago, like, oh, what do you like about the city, or why does the city change all the time, or why why do the neighborhoods always change? And I always tell them that from being here so long, it almost feels like every forty years, all the neighborhoods, all the hoods are okay for a while, mm-hmm. and then they have kids that get bored of the city and they want to move out to the burbs yep. or because it gets more expensive yep. they settle they have their kids mm-hmm. their kids get infatuated with the idea of living in the city, in the city. so they want to come, come back, back go, in go to college live out here and then the cycle c- continues yeah no way the, no shit that's a way to think about it look seriously how, look how the city grows the city grows from the water out so mm. yeah and from being inside the city so long i've always been like i kind of want to get out of the city go do something else you know and then you got the people that aren't in the city that's always like, you know, let's go to the city. Let's go to the city. You're kind of like, eh, yeah, don't want to be in the, the city. Take this metro for three hour, three, you know, three hour mission. E- exactly. Just to go hang out at Navy Pier. For three hours and spend mm-hmm. a couple hundred bucks. <laughs> Hanging out. Hanging out. Making yeah. memories. Yeah. Damn, that's the way to think about it. I never really thought about the city that way and why it always changes, but that is an actually good way of thinking about it. It does like shit changes crazily in Chicago. Now it's just it, now it's just a it's just a problem because of how fast it is. Yeah, it's just fast, and so people are just like, oh, they get all anxious. So then you know they're like, oh, my neighborhood. Oh, blah, blah, blah. this city is always undergoing improvements. Yeah, always. Mm-hmm. Always. You know, it was a standstill for a while in the eighties and nineties. You mm. know when all, you know all the, all the projects that were here for a while. But that was just because of uh, what, what was here. What was going on politically? Yeah. Yeah. It's just not every major city was doing that great. Mm. Damn. <laughs> yeah. After crack. Fucking Chicago. Fucking crack. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Chicago. Man, it's a fucking crazy city. I love this motherfucking city, though, man. No matter how crazy it gets, it's yeah. just something about the grit and the I grind always, around this motherfucker. Yeah, man. I always try to bounce. I always try. To, I I haven't traveled much. Hmm. Florida, a couple of cities, Portland, San Diego, San Antonio, Texas. Yeah. Not even, I've never even been to New York, bro. I've never, never been to New York either. 
I've traveled to a few states and never been to New York. I've been to more smaller towns. I don't think I'd actually. I mean, I want to go to New York for sure. I love. I love what New York has produced, mm-hmm. but just another big city to like try to live there or some shit like that. Like, it's a, it's a mission. Yeah, I just feel like it'd be more of a hassle, and it's <laughs> you know. Uh, unless there was a guarantee. Yeah. For it. Unless there's some you know a need for me there. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it's just kind of not that appealing. But it doesn't seem that bad. Um just seems like very crowded very very crowded <laughs> from what i can see but yeah it looks like photo heaven yeah yeah that's what i'm saying it, it does have a, mu- a bunch of shit First to get into it has a yeah. great you know everything but i don't know how it would be living there type shit i, so. I know a lot of people that move there live there currently live there they love it for yeah. what it is and don't love it for what it's not you know it's fucking expensive. Yeah, LA is expensive too, though. I LA, mean, well, if you want to yeah. live, you pay what you, you know. I guess San that's Diego, the argument. San Diego too. Fucking nice ass houses though in San Diego. Is it, is it really expensive there too? Uh, if you want to live downtown, maybe like a stack or two mm. for, for like a st- one bedroom or a studio. And then if if you're living on the coast, that's like millions. Those houses. Yeah. It's fucking beautiful homes though. Yeah. Super nice on a cliff and everything. On the cliffs, yeah. Then you cross you cross the highway. Then it's regular homes. Those are decent, but they're like three G's. But you get a whole house sometimes. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes, and then uh, I think there's going into the desert, like going up the mountain into the desert. It gets cheaper, but then that's a mission if you're working downtown San Diego or something like that. Mm. But it's quick. Yeah. Mad traffic though. Mad traffic, yeah. Uh, fuck LA traffic, traffic though. Fucking Cali yeah, traffic. LA, I it's never, crazy. I never seen LA traffic. Never seen LA traffic. Uh, fuck that shit. Never been there either. Mm-hmm. Fuck that shit, man. That is nothing to. <laughs> no, I don't even. I thought Chicago traffic could be a dick. LA traffic is yeah. a beast. You can get around Chicago in like ten minutes if you know what's up. Though. If you know how to move through, that's what I'm saying, bro. Sometimes I, I had this idea of. Even before Lyft and Uber was completely established, mm. I always wanted to have this custom car like driving service. Mm. And then the rating system and the payment is all based on the fact that it's a veteran Chicago native person that right. can get you there in a guaranteed knows time. their street. It's like a, a speedy cab service. Yeah, and you're just paying for the convenience of just being hustled around through through everything because nowadays you, you jump in a Lyft, you got homie that's just doing five U turns over and over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my fucking girl had a guy turn on the on the wrong street, oncoming traffic once. Mm. Fucking crazy. But this, this, yeah, this is a problem, and this is what's going to lead to these companies relying on the efficiency of computerized vehicles. That, that's coming. Yep. <laughs> Good old Elon Musk is already working on that one. Oh, that dude. Yeah. Yeah, he's 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 crazy, motherfucker too. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's cra- he's crazy. Right now. Like you gotta realize, a lot of people I've interviewed don't have kind of the brain capacity you have, mm. and I think you've exercised your brain, you know, to the T. Really? Because I don't know. I feel like I'm still learning a lot. I don't. I don't necessarily necessarily think I'm that smart. I just. I don't know. I use a lot of common sense. Hmm. But I just process information really fast. Hmm. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Like, in the time that we've just been here, like, in two minutes, you know, I can tell you where everything, if you were to point something out, yeah. where it is specifically in the room. Just, I don't know why I, st- I feed this necessity of storing that useless information. <laughs> but they find it interesting. That's why That's why I take pictures of bugs. That's why I take pictures of plants. Just yeah, you're just a hoarder of information. S- just to know. Why mm. not? Why not know? It's like, man, this shit looks tight. What if I look at it? Super close. So let's know your tattoo artist. <laughs> Man, you have a really strong fan base too. I, yeah, uh, a lot of people like what I do, but that's because uh, I have a lot of like homies that just grew up liking my pictures. So mm. when I did the I was there that dot com nightlife photo thing, uh, a lot of that fan base kind of transitioned into tattooing. Hmm. And as I was taking pictures, I started dropping people like, hey, I'm also tattooing now at this shop. If you ever want a tattoo, just come by. Um, and that's kind of just slipped right on in. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And then nowadays, it's just people either like the pictures I put out um, 
information I put out or my tattoos all the time. Even though I still look at my work, look at my own work, and I'm like, I don't even know what the fuck you guys are liking about this shit. But I, let's just so critical. <laughs> yeah, let's just be an over. That's just over analyzing shit. It's just a negative trait I, of mine, I guess. Mm. Mm. So, so what is um, what's Jamie's food spot around the city? Four. Give me a uh, favorite or just just favorite. Mm. I don't know why I love smashing whole grilled chickens. So any place that has a really good grilled chicken, not fried, but I admire Harold's. <laughs> not fried. Not fried. <laughs> not fried. You like Harold's? Harold's is decent, mm. but I just I'm not. A, I've never been a fan of breaded chicken or fried chicken. I mm. just like I just like straight grilled crispy skin chicken. And Parsons, I'll smash a whole chicken there. Uh, there's this place on 18th Street by Racine mm. called Pollo Express. Mm. They do like a more like a Hispanic Mexican style. Uh, seasoning on the chicken mm -hmm. smash a whole bird really hell yeah dude they throw down they give you a whole pack of tortillas salsas the works for like 18 what bucks. was this again let's a take this down 18th and racing pollo express yeah yeah that's fire, chicken bro. express <laughs> you go there uh, during lunch you're out or eating in like five minutes because they got the birds going and the dude knows what's up so you're not you're not going to get a cold bird you're going to get a freshly like taken off to charcoal grill bird Word. And they're like weirdly clean in there. When mm -hmm. you walk in, you're like, man, this place is spotless. They're OCD as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. In there, we watch. When you go in there with your lady, you'll see the, the floor, everything. It looks like someone went with a Q tip and just detailed everything. It's crazy. That's my type. She's like, that's my type of shit right mm -hmm. there. I like that shit. Mm -hmm. that, that, you know, that, I'm real meticulous with that it's shit. It's just chicken. It's just chicken. Really? That's the only thing they sell. The grilled chicken, that's it. If you want a flan, like a des dessert, they'll give you that. Coke, beverages, you know, sodas, water, whatever you want. And I think they do like they a combo. They got that flan, boy. Yeah, they do the combo with uh, fucking rice and beans. And the beans are either regular, kind of like mushy beans. Yeah. Or, or the beans with the bacon mm -hmm. and all the other little bullshit inside. Oh. The more soupy beans, they're fire. Mm -hmm. We're sliding. What's your in, what's in your headphones? Cause you you do play a lot of music with your your pictures that you upload. What's in your headphones? In my headphones, pff, everything, bro. Really? Everything. I have I have, I'm not a picky music person. I listen to everything. You fuck with hip hop? Everything. Who's, who's rap, your favorite track. rapper? <laughs> Gotta ask you. All I got you on the session. Who's your favorite fucking rapper? I just like what he's doing. Travis Scott. Ah, uh -huh. you're the second to come on the session and actually say Travis Scott. Mm. Really. Nice. It's That's just actually a good taste. A, a dude I admire where he's coming from mm -hmm. and just doing what he wants to do. Yeah, he's really mm -hmm. just badass. Mm -hmm. He's a good performer from what I've heard. Great I've, I've fucking never, performer. I've never seen his shows, but uh, Youngblood Brian at the shop, mm -hmm. uh, he likes him too a lot. So him and I talk about him a lot. And, you know, I've in investigated a little bit about him and where he's come from. And I admire where, he, where he's going. Or mm. Where he's at. Dude's made it. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, dude's. dude's <laughs> He's got a Jenner on yeah. his hands. He's, he's made it. Future, future you like Future too? Yeah, I like Future. Future was just here uh, yeah. yesterday. Well, for real? Yeah. I didn't know that. He had a concert yesterday. Future I like, though, because that, dude, that dude's like preaching about real shit. Mm -hmm. and everyone's just like in the club just bumping. I'm like, wait, this guy's this guy's talking about some fucking bad shit. Yeah, but, that, but it's like club tracks, too. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. This dude's sad. This dude's talking about real shit, and people are just headbanging in the club. <laughs> Yep, mm. that's why he's future. Yeah. That's why he's where he is. Yeah. Cause that's that's the dynamic he gets. Mm -hmm. Man, that's good taste, man. <laughs> nice. But then it could go to country. It could go to classical. You like country music? It's, uh, more older country, er, mm. earlier country. Yeah, or early maybe forties country. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. More more twanging rock and roll kind of early stages. You rock still like? Yeah, I like I like some early early rock is really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anything, I've even listened, try to listen to bizarre music I can't understand. So Japanese pop, Japanese rap, you know, anything. It just, it just sounds if, good. If it, yeah, if it audibly sounds good and it, it stimulates my creativity or just puts me in a mood, I'll, I'll jam to it. There's, there's a bunch of shit on my Spotify that if it jumps on, I still don't even know what the fuck they're saying. Mm. But it's just it's a nice good. tune. It's a nice tune. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Good beat, good, yeah. good band, something. They got it right somewhere. They got my attention. Right. <laughs> Fuck. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's interesting, man. That's decent. 
Yeah, but I'm I'm a music surfer, so like I'm just always looking looking for, for new shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, cause yeah, there's, there's a shit ton of music out here, man, and mm-hmm. you know, you can stick to some of the same stuff sometimes, especially gets, in rap. Yeah, and it gets you mentally also stuck in a loop. Mm-hmm. You know, you're listening to the same shit. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seriously, you start doing the same shit mm-hmm. realistically. Oh man, Ames. I appreciate you coming, brother. This is this is a, a really great time. Um, came a long way down. Yeah, uh, man. Just to come through, and I really appreciate it. Uh, hopefully, people at home got to know a little bit more behind you. I mean, they don't even get a chance to see your face too often. They just see yeah. your work. <laughs> yeah. You know, so hopefully they get to know about you. But the one thing I will say is just, you know, from personal experience, um, you know, spending hours in the tattoo shop, seeing how you work and handle things, you are a very, very detailed professional. And that is something that uh, we lack a lot um, in any business. You know what I'm saying? And you being a tattooist, uh, you I, I feel you made a lot of people comfortable when they come in and very happy when they left. And um, that's just something that people at home really need to understand about you and why your work is so uh, uh, glorified. It's mm-hmm. just it's really good. And, and you really take care of the people you you know, you bring in. And so. If they don't know, you, you where are you tattooing at now still? Uh, are you still at Code? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you're still tattooing at Code of Conduct um, here in Chicago. Uh, if you guys need to uh, get in with Ames, man, he's, he's one of the greatest tattooists I've ever seen, seriously. Appreciate um, it. Uh, so I appreciate you again, brother. Thanks, bro. Uh, I'd love to have you back on. We chop more shit about tattoos and bullshit. <laughs> get, get BJ over here. Yeah, man, we got to get we gotta get you, BJ, on. Uh uh, we got to do it and some more of the guys and mm-hmm. we just chop shit. Yeah. Yeah, man. Let's do it. All right, man. Appreciate you, brother. Cool. Thank you.